What's up, everybody? Welcome to tonight's stream. Hope everybody is having a good Tuesday or Wednesday if you're in Asia. Today we're going to be playing and talking about Dorinthia Ironsong. Got a lot of new cards and heavy hitters, and I've seen quite a few different builds of her. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on a very, very straightforward, fundamental Dawnblade-based list uh, that is very, very similar to the list that I made a YouTube video on uh, last week. So if you haven't uh, checked that out, that's uh, that'll be uh, something that you can do, I guess, after the stream. Uh, but basically in that video, I made a Dawnblade list and I made a Switch list. And basically I've taken the Dawnblade list, modified a couple cards. Uh, yeah, and we'll kind of go from there. Uh, so while we wait for people to fill in... Um, Today was a mail day, so I got this. Let's see who in chat could guess what this is. This is a warrior staple that I will definitely need going into the RTN season. See if you guys can guess. Um, in the meantime, you guys can, uh, you know, ask a couple questions if you want. <sighs> no more Olympia. Unfortunately, I think I have taken that deck as far as it can currently go. Uh, I don't think Olympia is bad, just for the record. I, I think Olympia is actually quite in, quite decent. Um, all right, I'll give you guys a hint. It is playable in all four warriors. Grains is a very good guess. But it is not grains. Oh, I I also have to shout out my uh, LGS because I opened my first Fabled yesterday. Look at that. A Fabled Arena. I bought one box and got lucky, so... I, I I'll, I'll take it. <clears throat> gold foil Dawnblade. Uh, gold foil Dawnblade is not playable in every single warrior. I mean, it's playable, but it's not optimal. Balance of Justice is a good guess, and that is a card that I think um, going forward in the meta game is going to be very very important. Uh, same with Hold the Line. I think those two cards are really really important. All right, there we go. Somebody got it, Sir Rabbit. Good job. Rainbow foil blade blurry. Yeah. We got a couple copies of Rainbow Rainbow Foil Blade Flurry here. A staple in every single Bolton, Kasai, Olympia, and Dorinthia list. So these are these are gonna get a lot of people this RTN season. <clears throat> Also, I don't know about you guys. Uh, I looked at the RT RTN like map. It looks like a lot of LGSs are running uh, CC RTNs. Seems like a lot of the LGSs did not want to run the the draft RTNs for some reason. There's basically like one draft RTN near me, and there's like fifteen CC R RTNs. So. I do want to get more practice with the uh, with draft though. So, um, I guess after RTN season before uh, Pro Tour LA, uh, we will be doing a draft camp. Uh, so that will be quite cool. Uh, I still do. I still do need to get a uh, grains though. I still don't have a grains, but I think for week one, week two of RTN, I think it's actually fine to not have it. Um, I guess there's still week one of RTN for me is my draft one. So I actually got like three weeks to get a grains. <clears throat> Few chances for the fancy CNC. <laughs> We're having a draft, 
RTN here in Norway. Okay, that's cool. I, I'm just noticing that at least in the US, like there's a lot of uh, CCRTNs. Okay. Well, thanks for playing the mail game with me. Let's switch over to, let's see. The, ooh, I didn't set this up properly, hold on. All right, let's switch over to this. Okay, so we have several sponsors here at the Card Guys. One of them is Fabric. The others are Dragon Shield and Magnolia Gaming. Shout out to them. At the beginning of my stream, I like to come over and take a look at the Fabric website because we can notice some trends, especially since we have data from the Battle Hardens. We've, the, the metagame has been kind of pushed in a certain direction. And a neat feature on Fabric is that you can hover over these things here. So you see this one's a green. This means a positive trend, okay? Red indicates a negative trend here, right? So even though there are five, about 500 Olympia decks, that is less than last week. Victor, 800 Victor decks, which is more than last week, right? So we can kind of see what people are building. So from the heavy hitters, Victor, clearly Victor and Kasai are like, the front runners here, right? Uh, and then we have, uh, where's Ko? Ko's here as well. Okay, so Ko Ko was actually the highest, but he's decreased this week, right? So we saw kind of week zero Ko coming out the gates really, really, really hot, and then this last week he's kind of cooled off a little bit, and we've seen more attention towards Victor and Kasai. Unfortunately, Betsy and Olympia kind of uh, bringing up the rear. Um, but then we can also like, let's, let's see, can we filter this by just CC? Yeah. All right. So we can. Okay. So, <clears throat> okay. So just look at the CC decks here. Everything is kind of in a positive direction. Dorithia is actually in a negative uh, and this is actually, this is uh, partly why I wanted to stream Dorithia today, is because I, I took a Twitter poll and I asked, what is the strongest warrior in heavy hitters going into RTN season? And people posted that they thought Kasai and Bolton were the strongest, and that Dorinthia was the third, and then there was a giant drop-off, and then Olympia had like 5%, right? And... I have gotten this question so many times. Josh, which warrior are you going to play at RTN? I can tell you that it is probably going to be Bolton. But I think Dorinthia is just as strong, but you need to... It, it, Dorinthia is a little bit more susceptible to getting metagamed by, by certain heroes. So... Uh, and as for Kasai, uh, I think Kasai will, we will see in a couple weeks that Kasai is fine, but not amazing. Uh, as for Olympia, his, the expectations on Olympia are so low that if he wins a couple RTNs, people are going to be really, really happy with him. Okay. But anyways, in terms of trend, like I said, like everything is pretty, is trending upward except Dorinthia, Bolton, and Reinhar. These are kind of trending in downwards because if Reinhar, there's Ko, and then for Bolton and Dorinthia, there's Kasai. Same with Leviah, also slowing down, Azalea slowing down. In fact, Azalea basically hasn't moved. Uh, Azalea is basically a solved deck at this point. <clears throat> Dash on the downs downturn here Tekla going up Kano going up we saw Kano do very well at the battle hardened um yeah obviously we have a lot that are just you know neutral like riptide <laughs> uh arachne also getting quite a bit of love as well that's this is actually surprising that this this is very high 
But anyways, we came here to talk about Dorinthia. So let's click here. And the equipment is all fine and dandy, but what we really need to look at here is the weapon usage here. And it looks like we've gone back to 70% Dawnblade. This used to be closer to 50-50, which was kind of weird. Um, it's good that we've seen people kind of move back to just pure Dawnblade. This is a card that I don't know if you need this anymore. I feel like this, a Switch style Dawnblade Decimator Great X might be a little old fashioned. We'll have to see. Uh, but, I, I mean, a dedicated Great Axe could work, a dedicated Double Blade could work. I'm not sure if you want to combine these two. However, I do think if you combine Double Blade with uh, Hot Streak Saber, that you could uh, get some uh, percentage points there. Uh, as for the cards here, uh, spoiler alert, uh, today's stream deck is not going to include Glistening Steel Blade. Uh, this is a card I have... I I think it's time to cut this card, guys. Now, why? Why why do we need to cut this card? One, there is a ton of armor in the format. So this can be blocked by armor, denying you reprise. And if they have a D-react, it can be very, very difficult to get around that. Second of all, you don't need this to race... Uh, aggro decks because there's no aggro deck in the current format that you need to race you might be like well josh ko is an aggro deck ko is a mid-range deck that can be aggressive um there is no true aggro deck like lexi like phi uh in the current metagame where you need to high roll people with glistening steel blade so i have actually cut this card for yellow warriors valor so we'll kind of I'll, I'll go over the differences in the deck list in a little bit we're seeing commanding performance, seeing use here, uptick in Iron Song Determination. This card is really important. When the armor gets higher, guys, this card gets better. Because this is the card that basically strips the armor from the Bravo, the Warrior, the the Brute, whatever. This, this is the card that gets their armor. And once you... As 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 if you play enough Dorinthia, you know that basically you gotta open them up first. You gotta get rid of their armor and then you go after it. Emboldened Blade, this is a card that I'm starting to like more and more and more. Um this is a two of in my deck list, but I could definitely see a three of here. Um You land you land this once, you're gonna feel like a million bucks. Lead with speed, this is a card that uh I've tried to include this one as well as uh, Edge Ahead, and I can't quite find room for it. Something to keep in mind, though. Uh, Epot, for some reason, the image isn't loading, but uh, I've gone back to adding an Epot. Um, I think this is a format where you we would see some benefit from having an Epot. Uh, and the rest is fairly standard here. Um... Pack action is pretty standard here. Obviously, Blade Flurry here. So now we've basically... This is basically the attack reaction suite that uh, most decks are going to be running here. Um, we see some out for Bloods. Uh, I'm still a little bit iffy on one-cost attack reactions. Uh, I'd prefer to just play the play set of Puncture, but I could see a world where you run three Puncture, one out for Blood. Uh, Shift the Tide of Battle. This is a card that I think... Uh, if you build around it enough, this card can be quite good. Um, but uh, it's a card that you don't really want to see three of, so I, it's currently a two of in my deck list. And we have Agile Engagement, Fatal Engagement. These are two cards that I've started to incorporate as well, as well as Chorus of Iron Song. Um, one ofs, one ofs, one ofs, because you basically want to tutor them. Uh, as for D Reacts, uh, we're starting to see Hold the Line coming, coming into decks now, which is which I think is important. Got a couple of Oasis here as well. So, okay. Um, I guess that's enough ch chatting about the trends. Uh, let's take a look at the decks that I've prepared for today. Um, so, uh, this is the original list that I posted in the uh, YouTube video. 
So I think it plays pretty well. Um, and, you know, a lot of people have told me that they have had pretty good success with this deck list. Uh, but today I want to try something a little bit different here. Um, so let's, I guess let's just go with the comparison lit here. This will be the easiest way for me to explain it. Okay, so on the left will be today's stream deck. On the right is the deck that uh, that I published, a, you know, a couple weeks ago. Uh, first change, uh, switching Crown of Providence for Balance of Justice. Um, I generally, uh, if I could, if I could, I would run both. But if I could just run one, I would prefer to run the balance because there seems to it, it just helps so much with decks like Brute, like Illusionist, um, and it's just it's a uh, it's good. I, I think you're going to get more usage out of this as Dorinthia. Crown of Providence is nice because it could fix a hand, but with grains you already have like some stability turn to turn to turn. Um, with agility tokens, you have some stability, stability turn to turn to turn. The only real benefit of Crown of Providence is that you could sink a, uh, a card that you drew with Steelblade Supremacy. You also get to dodge Command and Conquer once. Uh, so I could see an argument for running both. Uh, but today I, I want to try out the Balance of Justice just to see how it is, um, I think if you have a Crown of Providence and you don't have a Balance of Justice, totally fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, as for the rest of the equipment, it's going to be staying the same here. Uh, notice that there is no Tunic. There is no Courage or Blade Hold. Um, tunic basically eats up too many sideboard slots. So if we have Tunic, that means we have Shunt. That means we have Oasis. That's at least six sideboard slots there. So I don't know if that's something that I want to do. I think it's okay, because right now we're running Fate for Scene instead of um, Shunt. So they, there might be a world where we can make room. Uh, Courage of Blade Hold is good, uh, but I've been having more success with Grains, personally. Uh, we're running AB1 here, just slight concession to Wizard and uh, Rune Blade, I guess. Th this deck does not currently have Oasis Respite in it. Um, I'm still of the opinion that disrespecting Kano is a viable strategy. Um, unless you know there are known Kano players in your area, I wouldn't even bother um, running Oasis or AB3. Um, okay. the In the reds, I swapped the Biting Blade for the Fatal Engagement here. Um I just I just wanted to try a different two cost attack reaction here. Um, this one is also good by itself, but it's also great when you tutor for it. Biting Blade is less good by itself, um, so I think I think Fatal Engagement might be a little bit better than Biting Blade, even though Biting Blade has a has a place in my heart. Uh, we've gone down a sharpened steel just to make some room. Uh, for cards like Chorus of Iron Song, I think this card's going to become more and more important here. Uh, we're starting to see some prevention effects like Prism. We have things like uh, No Fear from the Brutes. Obviously, you just have to have this naturally when they play No Fear. You can't tutor for that uh, because they're probably just going to banish your whole hand. But uh, this card, uh, yeah, I think a one of is, is fine. As you can see here, we cut all three Glistening Steel Blades here. And I have replaced them with Yellow Warrior's Valor. Um, Yellow Warrior's Valor combines well with Determination, with Response, with Blade Flurry, with cards like um, like sh even with cards like Sharpened Steel. It's also really really good. So um, just puts a lot of pressure on them. Uh, we may not need all three. Uh, we might have just too much go again, actually, in this deck and not enough pumps. We'll see. Um, this could be a two of. Twinning Blade, because we're not running uh, that many glistenings. We're not running any glistenings. And our deck is not uh, built 
around trying to triple hit. If we triple hit, we triple hit. We don't have to. Uh, so that's why we cut a twinning blade here. Um, the uh, Okay, so for the blues here, we also just went up a blue here. Uh, just added an E-pot. I think E-pot is quite useful because it helps us pay for expensive, expensive attack reactions. Also gives us some uh, flexibility. Um, yeah. Gives us a... If we could deploy an E-pot also makes our late game a lot more scary. So, um, yeah. I guess the, the real key here is that a lot of cards... We're playing quite a few cards pre-combat. So... Cards like Iron Song Determination are, are going to be real, real, real nice here because we often just buff our weapon up so high that they have to give us a bunch of armor or they just have to just let it through. So um, that is basically the number one goal of this deck is to get their armor ASAP. And that's one of the best ways to do it. Um, so yeah, that's the deck list here. 55 in the main board here. Uh, the sideboard, we got, you know, the Agile Engagement, Fatal Engagement, and Iron Song Response here. These are, if we're likely to get reprised, then we'll put them in. And, you know, if we get the more situational reprise, we'll put them in. We have a couple poppers, like CNC, Down and Dirty, Nourishing Emptiness, a couple Pumps that are also good against attack action decks. A couple D-Reacts, a couple Punctures, and a couple Overpowers here. Um, basically a bunch of attack reactions <laughs> in, the, in the sideboard because we, we want to tailor it uh, to our opponent. Uh, in the main deck, we actually only have like three Blade Flurry, a Pride, two Response, a Puncture, Route. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, attack reactions that pump, I guess, nine if you include Overpower, and then... Obviously, this thing steel blade can tutor anything. Um, so yeah, we're we're not actually running that that many attack reactions, but we do have enough that uh, there should be good synergy here on turns where we have a warrior's valor. Um, yep, this deck is gonna play pretty aggressively. Uh, so yeah, I. I don't think we actually want the game to go too, too long. Uh, probably about 10 to 12 turns. So, All right. Let's see if there's anything in chat here. Um, I pulled a Rainbow Foil Grains from your draft pack. Congratulations on that. Take it on the chin, too, sees play. Uh, take it on the chin is a card that... Um, Think is better in dual wield builds. I I could see it somewhere in the eighty if if we can make a little bit of room. Right now, I'm not sure if twenty two blues is too many. That's one thing I'm not a hundred percent sure. And I'm not sure if we have uh, enough attack reactions. We might have too much go again. Because if you look at how much go again we have, we have three, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, plus 6, 25. <laughs> 25 go-agains is... That's actually not that that high, I guess. 25 is, like, just about right. So we'll see how this this does. Um, what do I suggest for a heart replacement? Just add anything, like... A third embolden blade, e pot, time snap potion, iron song response, whatever, whatever you want. This could be any card. Don't don't get too attached to it. In fact, in fact, I might eventually cut heart because. So we we basically have three cards that don't block. We have iron song pride, uh, e pot, and heart, and generally. There's some risk to having three cards that don't block because you might draw two of them at the same time. So, uh, does the deck still require high go again in fear of Jeremiah Illusionist? Yes, you need a lot of go again. Uh, this is a, a little bit easier these days because uh, you 
you basically start going face against Dromai quicker. Um, as soon as you have, like, uh, as soon as you have, like, two counters, I think that's when you just basically start start going after Dromai. You, you don't want to be clearing two dragons a turn in general. All right, let's play some games here. Um, <laughs> thank you, Fabry, for uh, advertising for me. Uh, that's that's very nice of you. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be the best, but uh, we will have we'll we'll have a good time. All right, uh, let's see here. All right, so for those of you who want to see the stream or see the deck list, I'll put it in chat for you guys. So there you go. Um. Yep. All right, let's play some games. You know, of, of note, if you look here at the uh, there, there's a such a wide variety of heroes being played, which is really really cool to see. I'm seeing a lot of Prism though. <laughs> I mean, Prism won the battle hard, and so he, she's like, uh, people are, uh, people are hyped about that. All right. We got a hundred people in the building now. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, against KO, generally, I would say we want to go second. All right, so we're going to run our standard armor, of course. Um, so KO is very, very attack action heavy, so obviously Fatal Engagement and Agile Engagement are going to be good here. Uh, commanding Performance is also going to be good against him. Puncture is going to be great because he has a lot of uh, armor. Uh, and the rest is uh, less good here. Um, we might want to bring in the sinks just to be, uh, just to provide a little bit of threat against the pulpings. So I think we'll do it like that. We'll we'll leave the uh, iron song response, the third iron song response, in the board here, and we'll just run it as sixty four. Um, is there any cards I want to take out here? Maybe the Iron Song Pride would be bad. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so we have Heart and E Pot here. I don't think the game is going to go long enough for us to deploy a potion. So, uh, we'll keep it in. We wanted to test it anyways. All right, let's uh, let's go. All right. All right. <clears throat> so the number one thing that we need to do is because of Scowling Flesh Bag, we need to put our pumps in the arsenal. So normally we put things like Spoils and Valor Supremacy in the arsenal. That's that's not how we're going to do it against KO or against Reinhardt. Uh, until, we, until we get his armor, we're uh, basically... Putting the pump in arsenal, and we're gonna wait to draw the uh, go again or threat. <clears throat> All right. All right. Ho 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 ho. Thirteen. Let's uh. Let's get going. Let's play some cards, bro. Very weird. Everything appears fine. I'm not sure what's going on. 
Not sure why it's not giving me a inactive symbol. Is Talos our buggy tonight, guys? I don't know. Normally they would give you a claim victory if they're inactive. I'll give him another minute before I... Because he, he submitted his deck list and like things look fine. So maybe he had to answer the door. All right, we're going to quit out of here. I'm interested to uh, hear what you guys are going to be bringing to uh, RTN. All right, Betsy, we don't want we don't want Betsy to go first, so we will go first. Uh, we will bring in some D reacts and probably run a clean sixty. Um, I guess we need some punctures, right? Um, actually, there's a lot of uh, a lot of consideration here. How many non-attack actions does Betsy run? I'm wondering if I should bring in these as well. Huh. You're going to give Kasai a spin? Kasai sounds great. Um, Do I need my overpowers here? I'm, I'm really no I have no idea how to play against Betsy, so... Hmm... Uh, I guess I'll bring in the Agile Engagement as a tutor target. And I guess I'll just run closer to 60 than to 70. Let's try it like this. Okay, we got a Iron Song Determination turn zero. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right, so Gauntlet of Iron Will, we're going to have to play around this a little bit. Civic Steps is interesting as well. All right, so let's see here. We can probably, should we Arsenal the Emboldened Blade or Arsenal the Valor? That's kind of the question here. We might Arsenal neither because we might actually be grainsing uh, a lot here. Um, I think we'll Arsenal the Emboldened Blade is 61, so he's running 65. So there probably are D-Reacts in the list. So. All right, six dominate here. Going to get some armor here, most likely. I feel like if Betsy doesn't give us armor here, we're just going to grains and then bracer swing. Double down blocked here. Sure. Uh, sure, we would like to make a Vigor. We'll go Bracers, Pitch, Swing. <clears throat> Some armor, please. All right, so let's see. You guys bring in Kasai, Prismer Dromai, Dory Bolton. All right, all right. Cool. Okay, this hand is pretty bad. <laughs> uh, okay, so. When this attacks here, you may wager. So she wagered everything. Uh, okay, so I think we just block with everything, deploy the E-pot, right? Um. 
three, six. Yeah, let's just block with everything here. Is Anathos the normal weapon for Betsy? Singing Steel Blade. That can be on top. Downside of deploying this E-plot, we don't have red overpower on our list. Um, we didn't sideboard it in. Hmm. Am I am I supposed to just swing Dawnblade Arsenal this? Because we're missing out on four damage if we don't swing. All right, let's just let's just do this. <laughs> Maybe we can even grains. So, E pot can be useful uh, with uh, spoils of war. No blocks from them. Sure. So we'll grains with our floating. And then we'll arsenal this. Choke slam, floating pummel. Um, obviously, this has no effect on us. And if we lose a card here, it's not that bad. Um,. If we lose a card, we probably lose the. Uh... Probably lose the singing here, and we'll just. Or we'll probably lose the supremacy, sorry. We'll just sharpen steel swing, and then. Uh... Oh, we actually have a vigor token as well, so. Hmm. Either way, here, we're not blocking this, obviously. There's no on hit except Pummel, which I presume is coming. Crack Gold Arsenal singing? Could be. Uh, stream sniping? I have no idea. Um, I do know that my on stream games are much harder than my off stream games, though. So, And people do like to play against me, and they message me and like, hey, I, I played against you. What did you think of the game? So. All right, Pummel, sure. Uh, I think... So, Shift will give us go again so we can actually play the E-Pod out. So... And we have... Yeah. So, actually, we we can Arsenal the Singing, actually, which is nice. Or should we... Because we have the Vigor, we can... Um, I guess there's a possibility that the Betsy lets us uh, attack twice. So in that case, we need the resources. So let's discard the Supremacy. It's really close, though. Okay, so we can Sharpen Steel Swing and then Shift into Epot Arsenal the Singing. Should be quite good. I guess we could also try to, let's see, to, so it still has a lot of armor. That's kind of the issue. So they, they could deny reprise. So we could, we could rely on singing to, to, to give us a go again with glint, but I kind of like this uh, original plan a little bit better. I do try to run into Josh while he's streaming, but it's, <laughs> But it's much better if you turn the stream off and then come back to the game. That way you can actually learn something. Fair enough. All right. Time to clash. We're definitely losing this clash. Um, reactions here. Interesting. OK. 
Okay, we'll play shift. Are we gonna get an agility token too? No way. Play your D react. Okay, there's a giant staunch from Arsenal. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Fine by me. Tech plating Anathos, sure. Uh, is there any time when Betsy could actually draw cards? Like multiple. Think about when I want to. I guess I'm just should just treat this as a two block. Um. So this costs how much resources do we? We have the e plot on the field. So one, two, three, four, five. So actually, with the E-Pot, we can play our whole hand out, which is nice. Uh, if... Do we sync this, is the question. Because this singing might be stuck there. I guess we don't. Because we might need the sync below to pay for things, depending on how this goes. Alright, so we saw staunch from our opponent, so... Likely running Sync Fate Staunch. Uh, have you played around with Runner Runner? Feels really good in a Julie Heavy deck. I think it is also it's 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 good in a Julie based deck for sure. Uh, you could pop Balance if they sync twice. That is true. <laughs> All right, Spoils War Pitch Goblet. Swing Dawn Blade. So you see, one of the issues with Guardian, they deny us reprise because of their armor. That's why we do need to have some one cost stuff. Uh, because he has no arsenal. Um, oh, he could get mega punished here. We could actually grab twinning with the singing steel blade if he blocks from hand. Okay, agile engagement only giving us plus two here. Okay. All right, we just swing dawn blade here. Now we can uh, Twitting Blade this if we want. Because we do have to go again. But it didn't block. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So we have a Dawn Blade counter now. And we have the most obvious pummel in the world here. Uh, so... Do we block 10 here? So this this is where Crowd of Providence would have been better, obviously. Hmm. So I think we block 10 here. Let's just see how to do it. We can actually hold... Uh, this is actually very dangerous because we get to we could hold so many cards here. So we could block like this. And we can hold two blues. The th the thing is we don't have red overpower in our deck. Oh, that feels bad. Yeah. That's okay. We're losing value here, but he's also losing value here, so whatever. Okay, Arsenal, you're the pummel here, most likely. Okay, there, there's some issues with this play here. If he doesn't uh, give us a reprise here, we're kind of screwed. Okay, giving us a reprise. We have double singing here, so you guys know what this means. 
<laughs> We're going glit twinning, baby. So grab glint. We'll play glint first because there's a possibility we draw twitting that we can save our singing for something else. Okay, that's fine. Now we can play this. Now, if we had red overpower, we could just go over it, but we don't have red overpower, unfortunately. Um, so that's just a mistake. I, I, just, I just should put a red overpower on the list. Okay, so we go twitting here. I really just want to go th straight through, honestly. Yeah. If this isn't a D react, that's Pummel. So I'm thinking about grabbing route here. That might be better. Yeah, let's grab route. We have to return a three block to hand. We could return double down to hand and it gets stuck. <laughs> Um, we know what's in his arsenal, so Embolden Blade is less good here, so we'll pitch Embolden Blade. Uh, so we'll return the double. Hmm. Does she have a gold token? She doesn't, right? So she'd have to pay for it. Choke Slam is also fairly useless. Yeah, we'll give you double down back. All right. So now we can grains. And has to give us armor here. Yep. It's fine. Okay, this hand's very good. In fact, I'm very tempted to just use bolters here, but an arsenal the eh no, that doesn't Mm. We're probably going to get to Arsal the Puncture here, so that's quite nice. Okay, they're passing priority. Sure. So I think we'll go Valor Swing here. And we've already worn down their armor quite a bit. By turn six, we've already worn down their armor, which is nice. <sighs> okay, blocking six here. So, got a blade flurry here. If he has a direct, he has a direct. It's fine. And this is where you can get really, really, really punished here, is when you have a D-React and the Dorithia still breaks through. This is when things go real, 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 real badly. Because you attempted to stop me and you failed. Now you... Oh, jeez. Look at that. Giving me the chapeau. Giving me a quicken. Completely drained of armor now by turn six. Everything is gone. So step one, we opened her up. Now we can... <laughs> now, this is our playground here. So we still know this is this is a pummel here. So I'm going to try to save the hit and run here. So we'll pitch the emboldened blade. Hey, I was told there was going to be an Azalea deck and sideboard guide from the card guys. Is that still happening? Yes, 
Willie B is going to be doing that. Don't come to me for Azalea stuff. All right, he dumped his whole hand. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, we can't get over 13 block. Um, but is what it is. All right. Uh, I think we are settle the puncture. It's less risky. What just happened? Oh my god, what did this guy do? Okay, so yeah, we're we're rolling back here, okay. All right, uh, several options here. We could go with the Valor or the Hit and Run. I think the Valor is a little bit better here. Let's see. Do I have enough resources to pay for everything? One, two, three, four. Yeah, we got enough. We could even Grains Embracer, so. And because uh, he has no armor left, adding plus one here is uh, really useful. I think we pitch the hit. Mm. Yeah, let's pitch the hit one here. Oh, puncture is not going to be so useful anymore. Uh, sure, take four. Okay, so here we'll puncture here and then arsenal the iron star response. So Betsy here keeping a giant hand here. Obviously he wants to come in with uh, the pummel. Some argument to making the uh, second victory there with this, but because this could be uh, CNC'd here. Okay. Okay, this is... Uh... Generally not how you want to do it, because this pummel doesn't get any value here. Um, so we basically just want to keep this hand. This Keeping two Iron Storm responses could be risky, though. But we have a counter, so it's not that bad. Yeah. Um... I mean, we can block this if we want. It's just... Should we? <laughs> Is the question. Should we block this? We can block eight. And then fate for seeing the... I don't think there's a reason to. I think we just take all the damage here and heal up the heart. <laughs> Send me to 12, sir. It's 
sorry. Send me to 10. I forgot. Anathos gets buffed here. All right, this is a little risky here if he doesn't block. Okay, so we're going to have to blow boots here. Unfortunately, we couldn't pitch the heart earlier. Ah, we're missing out on the health there. All right, uh, we can brace a swing here. Okay, this should get a block here. Okay, so we can double Iron Song response, Arsenal the Fate for Scene. Is that good? I think that's good. Okay, two counters on Dawnblade here. Kind of the beginning of the end here for him. If he pops another gold, we get to balance here. Sweet. Balance of Justice live. Sure. Tech plating into Anathos. Sure. That is so sad. <laughs> Santos is only coming in for four. Because <laughs> he, uh, he has Clash of Might in the there. All right. Uh, I mean, I, I should have activated this earlier. I guess the fate for scene will tell us what we're going to draw. It doesn't help. I, I guess it does help. We can also go fishing with the extra valor here. <clears throat> okay, you got no reactions from you. Come on. What's up, Inertia? Ah, yeah, I could have popped the gold for life. That's an interesting line I didn't, didn't see. All right, so thank you for giving me an extra card. Oh, shit, we did that in the wrong order. We were supposed to fate for scene first. Ah, whatever. That's okay. We can still do it now, I guess. Precision press, definitely go to bottom. All right, and they just give up. Okay. The game lasted about how long we wanted to. Remember I said like 10 to 12 turns. We got all of the Guardian's armor by turn 6, which is where we want. We're that's doing good. Um, our pitch stack was awful, but that's fine. We still had singies left in our deck. We didn't really get to use Determination that game. We didn't have a Supremacy turn. Just fundamental uh, smack them with Dawnblade twice gameplay. <clears throat> I have six copper and a gold, not three gold. <laughs> um... Draw regardless, won't get another chance, yeah. Saber's Dory or Dory Saber Dagger can be a thing. Uh, yes. I'd be so blessed if I could strip armor by turn six. Well, that's exactly what happened this game. Like, that's what this deck list is designed to do. 
literally step one. I have my notepad here, right? Step one. Get their armor. Step two. Right? This is how to play Dory. Okay, guys? How to play Dory. Easy games. Okay, guys? Just remember, step one, step two, step three, okay? All right. For those of you just joining us, this is the deck we're playing. I will post it in chat for you guys. <laughs> the elite strats, yeah. We also have um, control fi. Yep. If you can kadachi kadachi e strike, that's that's uh, you're gaming. Somebody already joined that already. All right. Do we play a warrior mirror or an Azuri? Okay. This guy's looking for Kasai. Okay. Well, nobody's looking for us. Okay. We'll just make a game. This control fire meme I missed? Uh, yes, probably. Ah, it is Zyran again. The guy that keeps loving to play against me. All right. We're up against Bravo. We'll bring in our D-Reacts. We'll bring in our Punctures. I mean, frankly, a lot of our deck is actually quite good against him. The, the issue is that running 69 cards here, we're very unlikely to see our d -Rex. We might have too much. Uh, let's let's go let's go lighter on the attack reactions here. Um, we'll, we'll hold off on the third response here. We'll just we'll just we'll just bring in our large attack reactions and our d -Rex and our punctures. So we'll leave the commanding perform. This is a card like I'm I'm. Finding like it's a little awkward to to get value from. All right. Um. All right. So this is the modern style of Bravo with the uh, tunic and the extra armor from the. Shield, so we got what? Three armor here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, so we got 52 health. We're going to have to get through this game. Uh, I think we should just arsenal this and move on. Don't give him a chance to, uh, to filter. Tear asunder into that. Okay. We can give... The card plus, uh, hmm. This sink blow might save our hand because it's pretty bad. <laughs> so I'm more tempted to do that. Yeah. All right. Which is the, I guess we'll sink the precision press. Okay, this hand is now functional. This is a very, very important attack. This is a hit and run into a poke. This tells me a lot about how this guy likes to play the game. The speed at which he makes his decision here and what he decides here tells me everything I need to know Going forward here. Okay, so 
We'll play this out. Obviously get more information here. He probably has a D-React. But it's very important to see how he plays this situation. Okay, that's fine. That came from hand. Okay, sure. Your turn. All right, this hand is awful. Jesus. All right, so we can block, block, and we can pitch supremacy. This still could be a D-React here. <laughs> Is there an upside to trying dual wield swords as a pure dual wield build as opposed to the hybrid? Uh, I haven't seen a pure dual wield swords Dory build. Um, I presume you don't gain that much from that. Um, I'm on three CNC, three performance main, just threaten arsenal. Uh, thanks for streaming, Josh. I need to unwind. You're welcome. When do we get more streams from you? Yeah, that's a good question. All right, opponent block with CNC there. Okay, this is annoying. But it doesn't have dominate, so we shouldn't give our armor here. Um, so I'm thinking just blocking. I really want to blow up his arsenal, to be honest. <laughs> I have a feeling this is a D react. Okay, so. I mean, we might just block with two cards. And this? Let's see. We block with this. We still have to block with this and this. And then we can pit. Uh, do we give armor here to maintain this? Uh, that's real tough. I think we can. I think it's okay. All right. Let, let's see if we're right here. What do you think, chat? You think this is going to blow up a D-React in Arsenal? It did. It got the best one. <laughs> Too predictable, Mr. Bravo. Too predictable. All right, so this game already is going to be hard. Uh, he's running staunch and fate. So that means we have sync fate staunch to get through, which is going to be... Uh, let's just say a lot of Bravos these days are running 60 reacts, not nine. So, all right, he didn't want to give us armor here, which means we're going to get a vigor token, which is nice. Disable here, basically forcing me to give a card. Oops, let's see. Could block two cards here, or even three cards, and deploy the. Potion. Uh, let's see. We have a vigor token. That's not helpful. Hmm. Do we just play this fate and then let's see? Let me think about this one. Uh, because this yellow overpower makes me want to make a move here. One, four, five, six. So we have enough if we keep everything. 
All right, so we do need to fate this, and then we can actually play this whole hand. It's not the best hand to really go for it, though. But it's likely to hit. That's the thing. It's likely to get armor as well, but it has piercing, which is going to be really weird for him. I don't love keeping this hand. I really don't love it, but I think it's just barely good enough. And I don't see a way to get value out of this. All right, so we got to think about our next turn here. We're not going to get an arsenal. We're going to have a Domblade counter. So I think we run a pump to ensure it stays. So we, let's put this to the bottom. All right, so precision press here, swing. Pitching the determination because if he overblocks, we can at least play the E pot out. It also makes it look like we are starved for resources here, so overpower is less likely. Okay, interesting. Okay, so that this tells me again how he likes to play. When he doesn't have a D react, he likes to overblock by three, which is what most Bravos do. All right, let's get through this the other option there was to um okay well he just happened to have the d -rick. the other option there was to have the uh just play the e-pot out and arsenal the overpower which i think would be decent all right sink fate and staunch oh man this is this is the uh this is going to take a while to get this guy all right, this hand is great, so we're gonna keep it. Um, this is a hand that's gonna get armor here. Very likely blocks the civic steps next turn. He actually could block with this, let's see here. We, we're coming in for six, this only pumps it to seven, so. So if he blocks like this and a card from hand, we're actually screwed. Okay, so we should probably block here and just. We come in for five, is he? Yeah. I th think we should just give less information here. We're gonna probably arsenal the determination here. So we shouldn't actually, I, my initial thought was to play both of these, but it just gives him a too easy block here. This plus this plus a card. Plays around Blade Flurry. And he hasn't seen one. So we're just going to go Valor Swing here. Because there's no clean block now. Like if he gives us a card plus the gauntlets blade flare gets over it i really 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 hate that lss printed this card to be honest like the downside is not large enough for good players like <clears throat> This kind of reminds me of Stalagmite. Like, it's just so powerful in the hands of a high-level player. All right, let's Blade Flurry here. Get another D-Rex if he has one. Looks like he didn't. We're not going to pay for Vigor. We're going to swing. Okay, this is probably not a D-React based on how we played last turn. Could be a staunch response. Let's see. Let's try to think logically here. Could be a staunch. Could be a staunch. Because he didn't hammer us. You guys think I should fire this off? <laughs> hmm. This hand also is can just plow through. I 
because we have the payment for this. So let's let's just play the determination and swing here. It's probably a no block from him. It's fine. I think we just play the overpower and the arsenal of singing. Do we boots here? I think we don't. We 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 really want to save them for our supremacy turn. Okay, this is not staunch. Oh, we drew four reds. That's so bad. And he's coming in with dominate. Uh oh. That's real bad. Real bad to draw this hand at this time. It's awful, actually. So assuming this is Pummel, we're going to lose a card. And then we could... Yeah, we could still have a turn. Yeah, we really need to maintain our armor. Yeah. Hmm. So we have a vigor token, so we this plus the vigor token can pay, yeah. So at least we can get six damage in. Okay, that's not pummel. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, that changes things. Sort of. Not really, actually. Okay, we have a very powerful turn. Or we can grains here. Hmm. I feel like grainsing is better. I love you supremacy, but we'll keep you for second cycle. We might not get to second cycle, to be honest. Yeah, let's just use our hand efficiently. Another four red card hand? Really? <laughs> oh. All right, we're gonna have to sink our valor away. Oh, that's so feels so bad. We have to do it like right now so we can have the information on whether we keep our hand or not. We have a bigger token, so to play all of this, we need one, two, three, four. And then this could be a D react. Like he's only he's only had three D reacts this whole game. Ugh. Am I just supposed to be disciplined and block this turn? Putting a second supremacy to the bottom is good, feels so bad. Ugh. No block could be possible here. I, I want to sink this valor like it now. <laughs> Ugh, okay, pummel from Arsenal. So he did have it. I, this is one of the issues about streaming is like playing on Talishar, having to look at chat and everything. I forgot that this was pummel. IRL, I would not have forgotten that was pummel or that he was representing that last turn. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so he's going to put a D react into Arsenal probably. Okay, so we're going to lose a card here, so I think it's fine. We could just sink, try to sink one of these away. I guess Valor is now stronger than... Uh... No, Puncture's still stronger here. I guess Valor's stronger if he, does, if he wants to keep his hand. All right, let's sink this. 
Let's sink the supremacy. Okay, we're going to lose a card here. Okay. All right, so we still have something here. So do we try to protect our life total a little bit, or do we just try to get six damage in here? Not thrilled that we've only seen three D-Rex here. We're kind of giving him an opportunity to play it next turn if we... I guess, I guess let's just keep, keep our two cards here. It's a blue on his hand. Should be. Alright. Swing Dawn Blade pitch. Oh, we actually have a vigor. I forgot about it. Okay, actually we can make something happen with this turn. <laughs> okay, at least at least we're gonna get a vigor token back, so sure. Oh, he's thinking about giving me a reprise. You gonna flock with your sinker fate? Or oasis? Jesus. Okay, second staunch here, that's fine. <laughs> Alright, this hand would be better if this was a red valor. But at least this gives go again. Um, that's very weird. Why did he tunic? I guess he only had one blue. Yeah, he probably only had one blue here. So this is something fairly important moving into Arsenal. Should we, should we just, uh, do we have a, we don't have a bigger token. Hmm. We might just need to uh, rely on. Hmm. We might have to break our bolters next turn, even though I'm not thrilled about it. Really not thrilled about it. This guy's been conserving his armor really well. Boots might not even be the play here. I think we grab Glint here. Do we grab Glint or do we grab Shift in the Tide of Battle? We don't need the extra card from Glint. Possible we we draw Iron Song response though, which would be nice, or Blade Flurry. Okay, so I guess I guess we'll go singing into into Glint here. See what we draw. Ooh, I forgot we had this in the deck list. <laughs> All right, do we pride now? Probably not. Do we have response now? Hmm. If we had one extra energy, we could actually play around to D-React, but we don't. Either way, I think we just have to pass here and then get reprised on the next attack. There's Fate. Oh, I hate guardian so much they have so much armor and then they have a lot of d reacts tough 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 all right yeah i really wish we had one more energy here actually hold on we do hold on yeah ha okay we just can't swing again but i mean we could break through and get a counter i guess it's worth it sure i guess 
I guess we'll take it. <laughs> All right, this hand is pretty good. Ooh, unfortunately, this hand gets blown out because we don't have reprise. Ooh, he can deny reprise very easily. I think we just have to play for a little longer game here. See, this is this is why you keep your armor as long as possible. Like this hand is not functional because he has six armor just sitting here. This is why the pre-combat pumps are really important. Um Oh man. I guess we could glint into something. We might just fate for scene and try to opt something to the top or bottom and glint it. It's, that doesn't feel like a winning play, but we're behind here. Do we fate for scene, try to opt something nice for it? Like, he can deny the reprise. Never mind. What am I talking about? I should have blocked. We're we're ne this guy's good and good enough that we're never gonna get reprise here on our next turn. Um let's see let, let's give our opponent the opportunity to make a mistake. Let's see if he makes a mistake. I'm calling it right now he's gonna block with his armor. And not give us reprise. Oh, if he gives us reprise, this is re this is gonna fall apart for him. Oh, all right, blocking three over. Okay, Jesus. All right, well, we're gonna have to go fishing for our twinning blade. Twinning blade. Nope, no twinning blade. All right. One of the one of the other issues with this list being so straightforward is that he knows that he can block at plus three, and there's no like CNC or nourishing to follow up in general. Okay, so we'll end our turn, Arsenal. This <clears throat> and this turn, this this hand's so good. Holy shit! <laughs> uh, unfortunate that this. Well, uh, I guess we have to give up. Some armor plus, uh, yeah. Should I give up the valor or the supremacy here? We already have an arsenal, so I, let's just do this. Oh, this could be pummel here. <laughs> this would be real bad if it's pummel. Uh oh, it is pummel. Oh, I hate guardian so much, guys. <laughs> All right, we're going to lose our Valor here. Oh, swing, pitch. This is this is a matchup that I think this is kind of the reason why you want to bring dual wielding against a guardian. You could bring the axe as well, but I Think Dawnblade into a skilled opponent that's running nine D reacts and this much armor is a real, real, real headache. Like the way that Guardian fundamentally plays, like it's it's difficult. Uh, I think we're just gonna arsenal here. We have a little bit of a wiggle room here. <clears throat> Life is getting real low though. Okay. Uh, debilitate. Okay, so we have to block this a little bit here. He said he got greedy here. Mm. Well, this hand is very good. But I need to be able to... Well...
Hmm. Well, we have to block with this. Now, what card do we block with is the question. It's either the blur, Blade Flurry or the Determination. I'm not sure which one. I think the determination is more valuable, so. All right, we'll block like this. We'll play out these and see what we can do. <clears throat> Iron Song Supremacy Go Burr. In Blitz, it would. In here, I'm very scared that this is a D-React and I get no reprise. Okay, that came from hand, thank God. This, this card, this piece of armor plus this piece of armor makes me really, really want to go dual wield. <laughs> because this, these two things are super annoying for Dawnblade. <clears throat> All right, we can brace or swing. The way this list is built also not having Tunic Shunt. Uh, we saw him make several plays with, with Pummel that he basically can't do against uh, against that. Uh, do we want to destroy Bolters? No. Okay, we can Arsenal this. Still one sink, one fate in the wild here. This also could be pummel here, but we don't play around it. Um, we don't need this. So, yep, if he has pummel, he has pummel. He does not. We live. Uh, Valor. Swing. At least we're going to be able to get a big attack reaction here. We still have red overpower in our deck, right? So... We may not actually grab Red Overpower here. We could grab Fatal Engagement here, would be fine. No, that's not what I wanted. Um, do we even have that? Oh, uh, we have Red Overpower, but we don't have enough resources to play it. We have Agile Engagement, which is okay, but it gets blown out by a lot of things. So this is where Tunic would have been much, much better here. Like, having one extra resource mattered several times during this game. Hmm. I think we just have to go for the Agile Engagement here. It's not the best, but... This gets mega blown out by a D-React, but... I guess we could go... Hold on. We could go Singing into Agile Engagement, right? How many resources do I have? I can't see it. I have zero floating, I think. So I could go singing into Agile and then swing. If I think he has... Because he blocked even, which means he has a direct. So we'll grab singing... And then we'll play singing. This is a technique that is almost never used, but we had to use it here. So we're over by a little bit here.
So he has to give up his D-React here or his Tunic plus a card. Looks like Tunic plus a card. <clears throat> or two cards. Okay, sure. Oh, baby, we've got Agility and a Twitting Blade. Ho, ho, ho. All right. That's a good draw. All right, so we know he has a D-React. So do we force it out with this? We force out the D-React here and then twinning swing. We have no resources, but we'll draw. Then we can bolt or swing. I think we have to force it out right now, right? Because there's a small chance he doesn't have it, but I think the arsenal's a, a D-React. So I think we play the, hmm. Two, four, yeah, we play it here. Okay. And pass party, player direct, yep. That's fine. Okay, so that is three sinks, two fates. That's This is making me very nervous. That came from hand, not from arsenal. Okay, so we'll twinning here. And then swing again here. So... Does he have the D-React in Arsenal? If he does, we're probably going to lose the game. Oh, shit. He doesn't have... He, <laughs> he doesn't... <laughs> he, even if it was... He, oh, if, he, if, it, if this was a D-React, he actually has exact block. But he doesn't. I mean, he has the D-React because he's passing priority at 8 life against 8. This is why you save your boots, boys. That was from hand as well. Is this also a D-React? No, it can't be, right? Okay, destroy bolters, yes. And bracers. Swing for a lot. Are you dead? Oh, baby, we got there. Woo! Holy crap. <laughs> that was a game, boys. Jesus. That was difficult AF. Oh, my God. He played really well. So he conserved his armor, played his D-Reacts properly. He had access to Sync, Fate, and Staunch, which is hard. We blew up one of them with Emboldened Blade. We got pummeled several times. We didn't have access to Crown of Providence. In the end, we had to go for a triple hit there. Oh, boy. <laughs> we were down like 15 life at one point, I think. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, this, this is how you beat Guardian generally, is you get a triple hit in with Supremacy. That's why you got You really, really, really have to be disciplined with your boots. There were several times I was thinking about using the boots, but yeah. All right. Well, we got there. There. Uh, triple hit. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this is the guy that loves to play me every stream. So it's n nice playing with you again. <clears throat> Jesus. Okay, so that that is really, really, really tough to play against Bravo without Shunt. We had we had three sync two fate there. And we we basically had to be very, very disciplined with our armor. Uh 
Guardian, Dory beating Guardian in the chat pops up. <laughs> yeah, Agile Engagement notably won the game there because the agility was generated. That's correct. That's why I think this card is really good in the sideboard. A clean one of because it blocks for two. I could see running two depending on the metagame, but singing into singing into Agile won the game there. Because he had a D React in hand. If I didn't go singing into singing into Agile, that line doesn't exist. Uh, why play Balance of Justice against Bravo? That's the only one that's in my list. I've been trying out uh, just running this. Uh, if basic, basically my if Dromai plus Brute is greater than Guardian, I will run this. If Guardian is greater than those two, then I'd run Crown of Providence. Because it's basically, do you want to draw an extra card or do you want CNC Pummel Protection? I think the greedy block really did bite you. So what was the what was the greedy block we were talking about? I wanted to crown sink into another blue for crippling. Didn't go well. Aha. Play tunic and set up e-pot and go for the triple hit. Yeah. Yeah. Normally double hit is enough to get most decks, but I think if you don't have a triple hit against Guardian, it's it's tough. That I got super lucky there. I only run two Twinning Blades as well. So to draw Twinning Blades on that hand is... Yeah. If Dory's in the art, we have to run it. That's, that is that is accurate. Yeah, he spent a ton of armor to remove your first counter. That is correct. Yeah. All right, let's play some more games. Wow, we got 150 people here watching. That's great. We, we almost had 200 earlier. That's crazy. Crown of Dominion. Yeah, I know you're a big fan of Crown of Dominion, uh, Inertia. Uh, okay, so... Again, guys, this is the list we've been playing. Uh, notably, there's no Glistening Steel Blade in this list. I think Glistening Steel Blade is bad, so don't play it. All right, well, let's play some more games. Let's play against a Reinar. That'll be fun. Oh, somebody else joined. Okay. Well, I guess we'll just make our own game then. Oh god, it's a viscerai. What 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 does viscerai do again, guys? <laughs> do I run A B against Viscerai? Are they OTK these days? They are, right? So do I need A B one? I'm gonna I'm gonna disrespect Viscerai, run no A B. Screw it. Alright. Uh we have 55 cards. What do we want to play against Viscerai? Puncture sounds good. They have a lot of uh, armor. One overpower, maybe? Command and Conquer could be pretty good against a deck that wants to combo, right? So we'll, we'll maybe add those in. I don't think any of the Agile Engagement, Fatal Engagement, Commanding Performance are going to be consistent enough because Viscerai is pretty heavy on uh, non-attacks. So, uh, this is, I presume this is some type of a uh, combo with the, the, what's it called? The one that doubles, is it called Looming Doom, I think? The one that you destroy all of them and then doubles or something like that? Okay, uh, I guess we'll just run like this, no D-Reacts, uh, we'll run only two Iron Song response. All right. Oh, a Royal Viscerai, okay. All right. Hey, Inertia, you're getting your royal here. <laughs> uh, what do we go? Precision press swing into Command and Conquer? Or do we determination swing and get some... Hmm. 
We don't get an arsenal if we command and conquer them here. Meh. This. Uh, let's. I guess let's just get one free damage while we can. Do we want to pitch the heart, or do we want the heart for next turn? Because we're probably going to be lower life, so maybe we keep the heart. Very possible he just blocks for three here, and we'll get a grains trigger here, which is nice. You want to give me the Aether Weave? Looks like no. So we're going to get the grains here, which is nice. And we'll arsenal the CNC. Ooh, this hand's great. <laughs> you need A, B. Uh-oh. <laughs> I need A, B. I'm very unfamiliar with what Viscera does uh, nowadays. Let's just put it that way. All right, so Swarming Gloomvale here. I mean, this hand feels too nice to... I, I want to see what he does, basically. Take three here. Ah. Dang it. It's consuming volition. Okay. We're going to have to give him a card. Uh... Okay. So we actually can um, hit, hit sharp and steel, hit and run, swing into CNC. So if we block with Blade Furry plus a card, we can. Uh... Yeah, that seems fine. We won't have an arsenal there, but I guess that's fine. So he'll have an arsenal now. All right, so sharpen steel, hit and run, swing dawn blade, pitch heart. Oh, we don't have to pitch heart. We had a vigor. Oops. Just armor and keep the uh, blade flurry. I mean, that opens up the possibility of a dawn blade, dawn blade command conquer, I guess. All right, no blocks from him. Interesting. Uh, do I want to destroy refraction bolters? No, I already have to go again. I would like to pay for vigor. Oh, dang it. I, I Second time, I didn't get to use my heart because I had a vigor token. <laughs> All right, now we see and see him. All gas, no brakes. Just go face. <laughs> you guys forget. I'm a very, very patient warrior. We need we need to save our armor for breakpoints. Also, he could have Arc Knight Ascendancy, guys. Oh man, this is so good. We got we got him to block with Morgentide Revel. Thank God we see and see there. Oh shit, four red hand guys. Ew. Oh, he passed back to us with a Thor red hand. Oh, no, guys. No, not like this. All right, so we need one, two. Th so. Oh, no. All right. Screw it. Oh, this. We've been drawing like four red hands pretty consistently. Like, we've been. 19, 14, 22, and we. We shouldn't be drawing this many red hands. Ugh. At least we have the Vigor token. That Vigor token bailed us out. We basically turned our red into a yellow, so. Um, imagine one was yellow. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I gotta love the vigor token here. This is really uh, paying dividends here. So, so do we blade flurry here and pitch? I guess we do. We basically put pressure on the armor here. 
not loving that we had to spend four cards here or we had to spend two reds to pitch here but it is what it is game asking if i want to pay one for a vigor token i would if i could all right so all the cards here being blocked sure okay this hand's much better here Okay, several ways to play this here. Still has access to three armor here. So, I mean, we just, the start of this turn is very simple. It's just what happens. Does he give us a reprise? Does he not give us a reprise? Does he block with armor? Does he not block with armor here? If he blocks with armor, we'll glint and then play the E-pot. Okay, so he... He didn't block and didn't give us reprise. Okay, so. Hmm. Okay, so. So if we bracer, he cannot uh, just use his armor. So. <clears throat> So we'll make a Vigor, we'll use our Bracers, we'll swing Domblade, pitching the E-Pot. And if he lets us hit, we'll Grains again. As long as this is not a D-React in Arsenal, we're going to get Reprise. Okay, no blocks from him, sure. Take four, give us a counter, Grains again. So we have double vigor token here and singing in arsenal. That's great. Okay, we got a counter singing and two vigor tokens. And okay. <laughs> All right, cash in. Okay, so here we go. This is the this is the crown of dominion turn here. Cash in, draw two cards. So that was from Arsenal. So he has six cards right now. Mordred tied. Down to five cards, but that's a great card to start the turn with. So cash in Mordred Tide is like the two card combo he's looking for. Still five cards left. Okay, Swarming Gloomvale gonna fire off some moon chance at me, make two in the back. Uh and I mean with this hand, we aren't blocking. No blocks. I am happy to throw the supremacy in front of something though, because uh, we have two. But he's gonna have to make me uh, want to do that. All right, next attack. Nebula Blade is it a is a card that we're gonna have to. So it comes in at a break point as well. Okay, the Mob Skies is something we probably have to block here. Okay, Mob Skies. Makes two more rune chance consuming volition here. Okay. So this would be really bad if this is pummel. <laughs> I don't think he's running pummel. Oh, he drew two cards this turn. Oh. We could we could use this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody just said it in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we'll block for four here. Uh, we'll block with this, and it's better to block with the bracers first. That way we have access to a two block and a one block. And then in the uh, whatever step, we'll blow this up. I guess I could do it later. I, I don't want to blow it up now while it's still in the reaction phase right because this would drop to two defense right so okay before end of turn okay so i could just use this now okay so he's coming in with nebula blade okay that's fine so we'll crack balance grab a card oh perfect <laughs> sweet <laughs> all right All right, 
We're gonna do we guys do we meme around and play double supremacy? I don't think we do, right? We don't we can't ensure that this hits. Actually, can we hold on? Four, six, eight, nine, twelve, thirteen. No, yeah, he can he could possibly block us out, so. Sorry guys, no double supremacy this time. Alright, so blocking here. Uh, and this is actually must be terrifying that I just blocked with a supremacy on a five card hand. Six card hand. It's like, what could your <laughs> for the memes be greedy, guys? No. We have to play properly, guys. We can't we what happens if he throws his whole hand down in his armor, huh? Then we we can't get over. We don't have enough damage. One supremacy, I guarantee, is going to be good enough, okay? Trust me, this 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 is this will be enough. He's going to throw his whole hand down here. I think he might save like a read the. Okay, so he threw. 11 in front of this. Okay. We have solutions for this. Let's see. All right. So we'll start with singing. Pitching the precision press. And... We could go grab puncture. Um, Or we could grab... Yeah, puncture seems good. So puncture will bring it to 11. Oh, this still. Oh, if he has a D react, we get blown out. Ooh. Okay, he has. Uh, I feel like he doesn't have a D react though. Like, why would he block eleven on six if he had a D react? Hmm. I think we just have to grab puncture here, and then we use the Iron Song Pride to bump it to twelve. Um, and that way this baits out a D-react if he has it and then we can arsenal the Iron Song response this might actually cause him to leave the game here because this is a second counter if he doesn't have a D-react here he's really in trouble alright so pass priority here take one He had a D-React. Oh, boy. See, guys, if we were greedy, what would have happened to us, huh? Okay, unfortunately, we can't do much when he has 15 block like this. Uh, okay, that's fine. We'll get to arsenal this, at least. So we know he's playing Sync now, which is fine. This hand's excellent. Uh, we can play Goblet. And then Valor, uh, Pitch Heart, Swing Dawn Blade. Royal Vis with D-Reacts. Yeah, that was, that was good. If you ask chat to choose between memeing or not, 99 out of 100 times, they're going to choose the meme option. Yeah. I know. I'm well aware of the tendencies of chat. All right, uh, so they didn't block here. Sure, we'll, we'll make a bigger. We'll bracer and swing and make another bigger if you don't block. So we have two vigor already and agility for next turn with the guarantee of, okay, sure. That's This is a really weird block. It's a very weird block. Uh, I guess we'll keep the response. Okay, sync from hand. Sure. Do we secure a counter here? Um, I think we do. Because we can also grains one more time here. So, at the end of the turn here, we have three vigor and an agility. <laughs> Crazy. All right, he went lead the charge Nebula Blade. 
Okay. Okay, so we have a pretty easy turn on our hands, I think. If we block this plus this, we can... We actually can just block with two cards here. <laughs> and we can Dawnblade into CNC, Arsenal of Supremacy. Seems good. I really think even if you don't get over this turn, the armor for 4 HP seems really good to me. Yep, I agree. All right, this is a very suspicious looking turn <laughs> because we we blocked with two blues here. We still have two floating now, so this could be anything. CNC here is going to get him hard. Triple Vigor, yep. Yeah. Card's good. Gives you flexibility on your offense. Allows you to play really, really mid-rangey. Courage is better if you're playing really aggressively, but I, I don't think there's any matchup right now where you're forced to play really aggressively. All right, blocking for four here. Very brave, but that's the correct block. So he might have a D react. That's why he feels so confident to block like this. So let's see and see him here. One card ten. Yep. Grains lovers stay winning. That's true. Oh, I think we got him, guys. <laughs> I think he really likes his hand. Oh, he's going to give up his arsenal. Okay. All right. What did we get? Mauve Skies Red was destroyed. Sweet. Ooh, look at this hand. Oh, boy. Look at this hand. It's so beautiful. Oh, man. Wow. Guys, this hand's nuts. Okay. Uh, sure. Take four. <laughs> All right. So, what I'm... So, we could either pay for a turn with Glint Oh, there's so many ways to do this. We don't have a pump. That's the issue. So we're we're definitely playing the Twinning Blade. And our go again can be either one of these. I think we... Oh, do we have enough resources to do that? One, two, three. Depends what we draw with Glint here. Okay, let's go Supremacy. Uh, do we pitch the Valor or the Shift? It's real close. If we draw a blue, the Valor's better. All right, we got to trust in the heart of the cards, guys. All right, so we're going to Twin and Glint here. And we... If we draw a yellow, we're okay. If we draw a blue, we're we're cooking. If we draw a red, we're real sad. So Oh, if he doesn't block here, he's mega destroyed. There's a chance he doesn't block here. Oh man. Huh. Because we don't have a pump, we, we basically have to rely on the Twinning Blade here. 
But I, I, I didn't actually consider that there's a possibility he doesn't block here. If he doesn't block here, he, like, instantly loses the game. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no, guys. Oh. Well, this also instantly loses you the game, guys. Oh. Game's over. Game is over. Sorry, bro. GG. Well, <laughs> uh, what can I say? Sometimes there's no right blocks, but that was a, uh... that's actually very, was a very, very interesting situation, right? Because it's like, okay, it's, it's five on hit draw card. I'm at 11. Still has boots up. And there was, if he didn't block, he loses the game. If he full blocks, he loses the game, as you just saw. If he partially blocks, that's actually, like, the riskiest thing you could do, but it was the correct thing to do there. So, there was no there was no uh, getting out of that one. <laughs> that was a checkmate situation. <clears throat> Sometimes all your cards isn't enough. Funny how that happens. Yeah, Twinning Blade is the GOAT. No A, B, all gas. Yeah, that's right. Balance of Justice here saying, oh, you want to play cash-in? You want to play Royal? Sweet. Do it. <laughs> the Welcome to Wraith special. Yeah. Uh, twinning flips the logic messes with their head. Exactly. Yep. Uh Well, um, as you guys can see, this uh, this is basically holding true. <clears throat> All right, let's let's think here. Is there any changes that I need to make? Hmm, everything has felt pretty good. Three yellow valor. I'm like, mm, I don't know. Shift, we haven't actually gotten to play. Maybe maybe Shift as a Singing Steel Blade target might be better. But I don't know when you would ever want to Singing into Shift. When you can Singing into Glint. I guess it guarantees the uh, agility. Shift the Tide of Battle has been really weird. Like I, I'm not sure if this card is good or bad. What do What do you guys think? Like we, we've consistently found issues. Like when we first saw the three majestics, right? We're like, oh wow, Blade Flurry is amazing. Spoiler alert, we were right. Commanding performance and shift the tide of battle are these are really hard to use. I, I'm noticing, like. This gives the attack go again, which is which is in theory very easy to do, right? With supremacy, with sharp and steel, with determination. Maybe this card is too greedy because this card is basically it's kind of like glistening steel blade in that it doesn't give damage immediately. It just gives you value over a long period of time. So like this card and glistening are actually kind of the same. This card is saying, okay, for one card you get go again for two turns. Glistening is like, okay, you don't get any damage now, but you'll get damage later if they don't block. It overlaps with the nine valor. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking as well. So maybe this shift the tide of battle should just be an extra sharpened steel. And mm, 
and something else on the sideboard, maybe. Lead with speed is is a card that has been really hard for me to find usage. Lead with speed. I, I tried to include lead with speed and um, edge ahead. But I couldn't. I guess that's a good two card hand, though. Okay, you know what? Let's let's try that. Let's cut let's cut these. Should I cut both? I guess I should let's try cutting both. Let's go with, with a lead with speed. We'll go with two lead with speeds. So we have some sharpened steel, some lead with speed. Is there anything else that we want to change here? Let's see. I'd vote for a second Agile Engagement in the board. So we haven't really gotten to see Fatal Engagement used. So may, maybe Fatal Engagement, this is too narrow, right? You could only play this if they're defending and it gets plus five. This one, you could play it as a one cost plus three with a bonus. So maybe, yeah. Okay, you know, let's trim the Fatal Engagement here. And we'll, let's add another Agile Engagement. That that card has felt pretty good. So now if we're, pl if we're playing so many... Uh, if we're playing so many uh, Agility Tokens, we, we should be running three Twitting Blades, right? Which means we have to cut a card. We're one over now. I haven't found a way to use this card. Edge Ahead is way better. I also like what Edge Ahead quite a bit too. Control the wager. Well, Lead with Speed gives you the agility token. There's no wagering here. The difference between this and Edge Ahead is 3 block versus 2 block. And Lead with Speed gives you the agility token. The other one... It's up to whether your opponent blocks or not. Fatal engagement seems straight superior to overpower. They both trigger in similar situations, but singing plus a blue becomes plus six. Singing plus a blue. Hmm. That's actually an interesting point there. Maybe, maybe uh, we don't need the yellow overpower? Or... I'm... Maybe we don't need two red overpower. I'm not actually sure. Hmm. Yeah. I think uh, commanding performance is great into Victor. That matchup is hard as it is. Heard in their assaults can be pretty big. Nice to have you. Okay. Uh, what's the epot for? It just pays for things in general. Some matchups go very long, and having this out lets you close the game. Uh, you want the Olympia deck list? Okay. Uh, that's here. All right, so here's the Olympia deck list for you. Um. You don't wager decks that want to block. You use it to race other fast decks, which you which don't. So you 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 guys think that edge ahead is better than lead with speed. That's also what I felt as well, but I wasn't a hundred percent sure about it. Yeah, I already moved, already added a second agile engagement here. Currently, we're at uh, eighty one. Does this list have any chance against Kano? Probably. You'd have to rush them down. 
You we have one A B and that's it. <laughs> They're allergic to two blocks. All right, let's remove the lead with speed, add the three blocks then. Okay, we have to cut one card, maybe the yellow one of the yellow dollars. Okay. I think Lead with speed, the issue with lead with speed is that it forces you to play a two-card hand. If you don't have a bigger token, two bigger tokens. Blue puncture over iron song blue? Blue puncture, huh? When would you need blue puncture? I think blue puncture has a has a place. I'm just not entirely sure if, like uh like the iron song response is already down to a one of. I guess in the situations where you have Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, you're. Yeah, you're right. The blade flurry and the iron song responses would be obviously before this one, so the game would have to go really long for this to matter. Sure, I could see it. I could see it. Okay, how does this look, guys? Um, so we got 55 main deck and we got all this as a sideboard here. <laughs> One copy of blue shunt definitely could be good. Um, right now we have the issue is that we have three no blocks. We have iron song pride, epot heart. So things get dicey once you start adding a fourth. Not saying it's a no block, but it's effectively a no block. Blue shunt definitely would help. Like if, if Azalea and Azuri start becoming a large part of the meta, I would uh, keep the blue shunt. In fact, I'd probably play three blue shunt. Okay. I think this is kind of where we're going to end things here. I think this is a, this is a good list here. All right. I'm going to copy the list for you guys here. I think this list is is pretty close to what I would bring to RTN if I were to uh, to play in it. So basically, fifty five card main. You add attack reacts as needed. You add D reacts as needed, and then you add poppers as needed. Yep. Will Helm of the Sharp Eye ever find a place? Probably not. Um, we would need a lot of opting or top deck control, which currently there's only Stroke of Foresight and I have Aphidia, so no. All right, guys, that is the uh, deck list there. 
in chat for you guys. Uh, I will be writing up a sideboard guide for this deck list, and that will be published on the Card Guys Patreon, uh, along with blurbs about all the relevant major matchups. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll kind of wind things down now. Just want to quick sh quickly shout out some of our sponsors here at the Card Guys. Thanks to Fabric.gg, Magnolia Gaming, and Dragon Shield for making everything possible. Uh, you guys can ask me a couple more questions, and then we'll kind of wind things down. Uh, why no glistening? Well, glistening steel blade is a very bad card, and I've been looking for more and more reasons to cut it. And with Lexi being gone and Fi not a threat. There is no need to play Glistening Steel Blade. The meta is armor users, and armor users are real good against uh, Glistening Steel Blade. One copy of Glistening Steel Blade? That feels like a card that's either zero or three. Um, <clears throat> how much should I pray if I brought this to an RTN and played a Kano? I don't think you're dead against Kano. You obviously need to go first or you take a ton of damage. And then you basically keep five card hand and just throw them at him. And then eventually how you get to a position where you can win is you're presenting lethal but holding at least one card. Because if you could AB three times, that does mess up their math a little bit. If you... The issue is when you deplete your whole hand and you can't A B. If you're if Kano's really a problem, add a second arcane barrier piece and your win percentage will go up. If you can dedicate more slots, add Oasis in there. But basically A B one or A B two will be the most bang for your buck. We don't use tunic anymore. Uh I don't think tunic well. Tunic is good if you use it with Shunt, but I've been learning to get by with just 3 Sync, 2 Fate. If you want, you can go watch the Bravo game. If you play it right, you don't need Shunt. Shunt is a crutch. It's something that we relied on for a long time. But just get good, and then you don't have to rely on the crutch. And then you can cut it and save a cyborg slot. However, that being said, a lot of people will feel very uncomfortable without Shunt against Bravo. I understand. If you feel very uncomfortable with it, run the Tunic, run the Shunts. But I'm telling you, you don't need it. It's very useful, but you can get by. Uh, I'm surprised you only... Uh, one red puncture in the main board, two in the sideboard. Because there are some decks that you're never going to get usage out of your puncture. Uh, uh, it's kind of eye-opening, to be honest. Having a lot of trouble since HH with the glistening might be a cut. Yeah. Glistening Steel Blade was for racing Lexi. And for racing Phi. And for putting a lot of pressure on decks that have 3D reacts and no armor. So it was good against Icelander because they literally had no armor except Cornet Peak. Sometimes they had the Gauntlet and Sink Below. So Glistening, great against Icelander, Fi, Lexi. Well, guess what? Two of them are LL. One of them is not seeing much play. So you don't need it. Glistening is very bad against armor users. That's why we don't play Glistening Steel Blade in Blitz. Because Blitz has very high armor usage. Um, what do you think is the best uh, filler for heart? Uh, like I said, many, many, many possibilities. Add a third emboldened blade. Add 
another blue puncture. You could add uh, another e pot. Uh, you could run time snap potion. Um, ignore me. Have I been ignoring you? I'm sorry. I I only see your 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 comments on the the puncture. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Uh, edge ahead over lead with speed because of the three block. Yes, and because most decks in this format cannot take advantage of an agility token if they block you. <laughs> Just get good, Lamau. That's. A solution to a lot of things. Uh, I, I'm not sure how many of you guys play like video games here, but like, I'll give you an example from StarCraft. I'll give you an example from Counter Strike. So it's like, well, Josh, I keep uh, forgetting to build my supply depots. I keep forgetting to build my pylons. I keep forgetting to build my overlords. Uh, well, you can just build like. 10 of them and then you won't forget but that's not how you play properly you're supposed to build one every 20 seconds or so right so in that case you could have your crutch or you can get good <laughs> same with counter strike you're like i can't hold off a b rush on banana so i just always throw the smoke there so they don't come through okay or you could just get good and learn how to hold a b rush on Inferno. <clears throat> Take it on the chin. Uh, that card's probably... It's probably decent. I felt like it's more for dual wielding decks. Because if you go down a card. With Take it on the chin. Um, you basically... it's You only have four cards maximum to strike back. So it's less likely to break through. Uh, how are you feeling against the Brutes or Illusionist? Uh, Brutes, as Dory, feel fine. The issue is you have to play around the Flesh Bag pretty, pretty well. Uh, Illusionist, I haven't played much against uh, the new Illusionist yet. So you cut uh, Glistening from the Switch Dory 2. Uh, I haven't updated the Switch Dory list, but uh, yeah, I would probably do that too. Because uh, Glistening Steel Blade says target Dawn Blade, right? Uh, thanks for all the Dory updates. How's the Kasai matchup feel without Shun? It kind of hurts. Uh, I feel like you have a pretty decent time against Kasai. It's about threat. Rec it recognizes the threat level. So saving Sync and Fate for the correct uh, the correct threatening turn from them. I, I mean, Kasai does not run that many D-Reacts. So you should be able to play it kind of similarly to like a six uh d react guardian uh what's your strat against tekla Vossen, my locals has that lunatic who went to hartford with <laughs> with him uh well let me tell you about a card my friend all right right here this is your solution This is how you break his heart. You blow up one of his pieces of armor. And then he can't become Meklo Teklo Vossen. Three sinks, three take it. Uh, that all you got in Kasai normally. Copper starve them. The gold plan is not great in Dory. Played against him at Hartford. Nice guy. All right. All right. <laughs> is it Shatter? <laughs> this is Shatter that I have on the screen right now. Oh, I didn't. Oh. Ah. There. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I had this up the whole time. I thought you guys could see my screen. My bad. My bad. <laughs> 
Yes, this is this is how you make him cry. Okay. This car's real good. <laughs> uh if you don't want to metagame that hard against him, what you can do is recognize that if you're aggressive turn after turn after turn, like Hecla Vossen does not have on hits, so you basically get to play five card hand into five card hand against him, and eventually you break through on an important turn and things snowball out of control. In order for him to progress his game plan, he has to keep cards in hand. So that means you're very likely to farm counters. Very, very similar to how Dash plays against Dory. Um... One copy of Shatter against Kasai and Olympia. You could. The key the key as Dory versus Kasai is not to drag the game out too long. You want the game to go about eight to ten turns against Kasai. That way they don't get ridiculous value out of uh Dynamos. Be careful when you break the combat chain, as as uh, pointed out in chat. All right, guys. I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys have enjoyed this stream. Uh, for those of you who have RTN this weekend, good luck. If you're bringing Warrior, come back with your shield or on it. Come back on your sword or on it. I don't know. <laughs> what is the quote for that? Uh may your may your route always get the kill all right guys take care